Hi there, today we're going to look at analysis of variance, one way analysis of variance, uh, also known as ANOVA and SPSS. By the end of the session you'll be able to run your own ANOVA within the software and if necessary run post hoc tests to identify where differences exist within our data. So what does ANOVA do? Essentially, it extends upon uh, theories of independent samples, t-tests, and paired samples t-tests, um, particularly the former, by comparing a continuous variable, say age or income, across categories of a, of a wider categorical variable, Okay, so with three or more groups. So as an independent samples t-test, we need two groups, and we compare two groups on the continuous variable. Uh, with ANOVA, we have to have three or more groups. Well, essentially it does, it firstly measures the variance of the groups, and that's how it's calculated. Um, but we're also able to uh, assess the mean score for each group, and that's really where the value of the st uh, statistic comes in. Essentially, we're assessing the probability that if we observe any differences between our groups, that these are or are not the product of chance, and that's why we set our hypotheses. Where we find that there is a difference, between our groups, we require post hoc analysis uh, for validating and identifying where those differences exist. So it works in a two-step process. Firstly, we ask the question, do any differences exist, say, in height between three groups um, of age group? If we find out that the answer is no, we move on to a different test. Um, we test this by doing an ANOVA test, um, but if we find out, yes, there is a significant difference and therefore we have to re uh, reject our null hypothesis, we do post hoc tests. So where exactly do they exist? So what do you need to run a, an ANOVA? Well, as I said before, you need one continuous interval ratio level variable and one categorical variable with a minimum of three categories. There are some assumptions of ANOVA. Firstly, you must have an adequate sample size. As always, I say 50 is a minimum. Some people say 30. You need a normal distribution of your um, dependent variable, and you expect homogeneity of variance. And this is something that is tested within the ANOVA analysis. Um, and we need to work according to uh, variations in this statistic. Okay, so the um, data we're going to use today comes from the older customer grocery satisfaction survey. Uh, and the question is, do people of different ages perceive themselves to have varied levels of mobility? So we're looking to see if whether there's a relationship or not between age and how people rate their mobility, when mobility is um, based on four categories of very restricted, restricted, a little restricted, and not restricted. So are people that are not restricted, younger or older than those who are a little restricted, restricted or very restricted? So <clears throat> our null hypothesis therefore is there is no relationship between age and level of mobility and our alternative hypothesis is there is a relationship between age and level of mobility. Okay, so we're in the programme. Um, we're interested in finding out whether age uh, is related to people's perceptions of the level of mobility. Um, being the dependent variable uh, in the analysis, age uh, is required to be uh, normally distributed. So we're just going to run a quick test uh, for this using um, the chart builder. Now we've done this before in other uh, websites. If I click on histogram, drag the basic histogram test up here, look for age and pull it over to the x-axis. And we can display the normal curve as well and apply that. And that's what our data looks like. Whilst it isn't perfect, there is clear evidence of it being uh, distributed properly. Um, if we're worried about this, we can quickly run and explore for age 
and look at the kurtosis and skewness. And as we can see here, both are under or less than minus one and one, and therefore we don't have to wor worry so much. So what we want to do is we want to test if our four categories uh, has a relationship page. For this we use analyze, compare means, and one-way ANOVA. There are different types of MANOVA, so there's multiple analysis variants, MANOVA, but today, as this is the most simplistic test, we'll start with uh, ANOVA only. So our dependent list here is our dependent variable, which is age, and our factor is level of mobility, question 14. Now, we'll just have a look at some of the options. We're not interested in changing the contrasts of the uh, test, so we can skip cancel. Post hoc tests, something we, we would come to if we find that there is a significant difference, but at this stage, we don't need to. I think it's very helpful if we tick all of these. The most important one here being the homogeneity of variance test because this is a key assumption in um, ANOVA. And therefore, if we um, click on the homogeneity of variance test and allow ourselves to have Brown's Forsyth or Welsh test, we can then um, use their analysis instead of ANOVA, it's more reliable. Okay, so we've got some descriptive st statistics for um, our variable. Interestingly, we can look at the end score, which is 231. 14 people said they were very restricted, 24 said they were restricted, 55 a little restricted, and a whopping 138 said not restricted at all. And actually, you can see a downward trend in the age of those people. So the oldest group, 76 years old as an average, uh, is indeed the very restricted. Second oldest, 74 on average, is the, very, the, the restricted. And down to 69 years old, the no, I'm not restricted. And that really does uh, suggest that what we have is uh, fairly useful. Okay, so the next test is the homogeneity of variance, and this is really important. The null hypothesis being there is no difference in the variance of our groups. And if it's over 0 0.05, we know that we can accept the null hypothesis, that we haven't, reject, we haven't violated our assumption. In that situation, we can therefore take the ANOVA test. If this was less than 0 0.05, Levine's statistic was, say, uh, 0 0.02 or something like this, we would then choose a quality of means, either Welsh or Brown's foresight, it doesn't matter whichever, uh, and we'll take this statistic as being a more valid and reliable representation of um, whether there was differences between the groups. But in this situation, ANOVA is perfectly acceptable. We're observing here that F equals 8.25, and that this is significant at the 0 0.01 level. What can we confirm from that? Well, we can actually reject our null hypothesis and uh, confirm that actually there definitely is a difference in the mean age across these four groups. There definitely is some relationship between age and perceived level of restriction. The issue is though, where is this difference? Where does it exist? At this stage, we can't see. We don't know if the significant difference occurs between people who are not restricted and those who are a little restricted, but there might not be any difference between those two categories. We need to go and do a further analysis, which is called a post hoc test, to um, assess this even further. So we go back to our original analysis, uh, compare means, one way ANOVA, and this time we click on post hoc. Now, people differ in what the um, test they choose concerns. In all cases, 
This is where equal variance is assumed. You pick these top ones, for example, LSD, uh, Tuki, Chef. Uh, and when equal variances are not assumed, we have to use something like Dunnix or Games How. In this situation, I'm going to use Tuki. I tend to use this more often. Click Continue and OK. As simple as that. And what SPSS spits out at us, and this is the really important table, is a comparison of each category with every other category. And it does a mean difference test of i minus j, where i is these variables on the left and j is these variables on the right. So it's saying, yes, I am very restricted, and yes, I am restricted. There's a mean difference of 1.95 years, but actually that's above 0 0.05 which suggests that, no, there is no significant difference there. <clears throat> Same story with, I'm very restricted, and yes, I am a little restricted. There's a mean difference of 2.49 years, but that is also insignificant. So we can't say that there's a difference in age between people who are a little restricted and those who are very restricted, although we observe a 2.5 year uh, difference. It's not a sign statistically significant one. Where we do see significant differences are these asterisked ones, because these highlight the significant relationships. So we know here that people who are, yes, I'm very restricted and no, I'm not restricted, tend to have 6 and 6.8 years between them, which is deemed to be a significant difference. And actually, in general, people who are not restricted or claim not to be restricted are deemed to be significantly younger than all of the other groups. So if we're really looking for differences in age and level of restriction, we would say that there's a not restricted at all group and a restricted group, and that's where those differences lie. 